Hello, Michael here with another Renderman tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at Pixar Volume Shaders, which is basically, if you're unsure, fog essentially or atmosphere, um, which we can light with the Pixar lights and get some pretty cool effects. So I've got a little scene here at the moment. I'll just do a quick render to show you what it looks like before I do anything. All right, so as you can see, it's just a uh, light coming through a window with some fairly poorly modeled curtains um, and our robot guy sitting there. Um, I'll just show you what the scene actually looks like. So I've just got a sort of box sort of situation happening there with the light coming through the window there. Uh, so pretty simple setup. Um, however, if I wanted to make this look a little bit more spooky, um, I could actually add in a Pixar volume uh, to the scene, which will allow the light to illuminate the atmosphere and cast like a, a god ray, um, as sort of sometimes referred to, through the scene on an angle. So to do that, we'll need some geometry. So I'll stop that up here. We'll drop a uh, polygon cube into the scene and I'll just move it into position. Um, and so you can see we've got the cube in the scene now. However, obviously this is not great to work with because you can't actually see anything. So a good way to get around this is if you select your cube, uh, you go to P cube, the, the tab most on the left there in the attribute editor, go undo display, uh, scroll down to drawing overrides, enable overrides and disable shading. And then that way you'll just be able to see right through it. So that can be handy, especially for this sort of thing. Alternatively, you could add it to a channel um, and just change it to T like I have here with the background. Um, but now that's it for it, set to reference, so I can't uh, select it. So we've got our cube here in the scene, um, but at the moment it's just a standard polygon with a blend applied to it. We want to apply a Pixar volume shader. Um, and the way that you would probably think that you do this is by going up here and clicking create Pixar volume. Uh, not necessarily the best way to do it, because if you do that, um, if you do that, you get a uh, open VDB read node as well, which you don't really need right now. Um, I'll be covering open VDB in a future tutorial, so don't worry about that for now. We'll delete that. Um, and we're just going to stick with the Pixar volume shader. So if you wanted to do that, uh, create the shader without creating the open VDB node, you could just go into your hyper shade editor, uh, go to render man and then just type in volume and you get Pixar volume. Uh, so that's our volume shader there. I'm just going to call this one room fog um, and then I'm going to right click on it and graph the network out. So you can see that we've got this room fog here and I can assign it to the cube on our scene just by selecting the cube and then going into the hyper shade editor holding down right click and assign material to viewport selection. So now if we uh, run an IPR you'll see that we get a completely black render, which is no good. That's because our uh, volume shader is too thick, essentially. It's too dense. So we need to go select our cube. Uh, in the attribute editor, you can find the shader. I've called it room fog. You can see the tab for it there. And we can just go down to density flow and we could change that to 0.1. And as you can see, we're getting some spooky fog in the room, uh, which is quite effective. So uh, one of the, th limitations with this particular shader is um, it's good because it's actually quite a quick volume render. It's quicker than what you would get out of my fluids. However, watch the render as I get closer to our model and intersect the cube, uh, the, f the volume shader disappears. So uh, that's something to keep in mind that if you want to use this shader, you need to make sure that the camera isn't intersecting the fog or it won't render it correctly or won't render it at all essentially. So um, with our room fog selected um, or our pixel volume selected we can change a few attributes. Um, you could also do this in the hyper shade editor obviously but I'll just do it here so it's easy to see. Uh, diffuse color that's just the diffuse color of the fog so if I change that to a darker color obviously it becomes dark. If I could change it to blue it becomes blue. Uh, I've got a white light in the scene, so that's not actually uh, uh, multiplying any color into this, just so you know. Emit color means that the volume will emit uh, light. So if I start to turn that up, you'll notice that the light in the scene increases uh, everywhere, not just where the light is actually hitting, but you can also see the termination of that cube uh, where it intersects the ground. So if you're gonna use that, um, just bear that in mind. Um, and then, yeah, and obviously, as I showed you before, density flow, you can just control the density. So 1.0 will be very dense. Uh, you could do something very um, subtle, like 0.01 or probably 0.005. 
And um, if you've got a, a, a scene that you want to be mostly clear, uh, this will still give you a little bit of volume in areas where light um, is affecting it. You could also use light linking to light link your uh, light to the cube and that way the um, you'll be able to light the volume with certain lights and not with other lights if you're wanting to illuminate specific objects in the scene. So I'm just going to stop that IPR for now. I'm going to create another cube to um, make some floor fog. So um, I'm just going to go to polygons, cube. So just the same method as before. I'll just quickly speed this up. Okay, so with this one, I'm going to use the hypershade editor to create that volume. So um, I'm just going to clear that and select volume. So we've got pixel volume. We're going to call this one uh, floor fog. And then we're going to select our cube and we're going to assign that shader to it. And with that uh, cube selected, I can now see the tab for the material, uh, which is the uh, volume. We're going to change that to 0.01. And then I'm just going to run another render. Okay, so um, it's still rendering up here, but um, as you can see, the fog is in and it's on the ground. It sort of looks like what you would see in a spooky swamp or something like that. But one thing you might notice is that the fog is actually not visible um, or it doesn't appear to exist anywhere outside of where the light is touching. That's because we don't have mul multiple scattering enabled. So watch what happens next to the curtain here when I enable this. So essentially this is allowing global illumination on our fog. So it's allowing secondary light bounces to touch the uh, fog and not just direct. So that's uh, if you're wanting it to look a little bit more physically realistic, this is a good way to do so. However, if you're lo just looking to light up um, God rays coming through a window like I had um, initially, then you probably want to not have that enabled if you're just looking to uh, have atmosphere in very specific areas where the light is touching it. Uh, but that is actually worth knowing about. Um, floor fog is actually a really good um, way to show off uh, emit color as well. So if I start to increase that, um, you will see that the floor does appear to look more like it's more dense however it's still quite transparent at the same time so uh, if you're looking to do this sort of effect this can be an effective way to do it uh, and also one other thing that i should mention while i'm getting at this is that you can't do things like gradients of volume so you can't have it sort of slowly taper away towards the top with this sort of effect for that you'd want to use my fluids and i have a previous tutorial on my channel on how to do that with atmosphere uh, called atmospheric lighting um, but i might re-update that for 21 um, at some stage um, and there's a couple more features below here, um, the anisotropy and uh, primary and secondary and uh, low blend factor. I'm going to get into that um, when I do the OpenVD, OpenVDB tutorial. I think it's a little bit easier to explain it there than with just a, a static fog volume or static volume. Um, but I think this pretty much covers what most people will be using it for anyway, which is to apply sort of atmosphere to their scenes. Um, so really that is pretty much all there is to it. Um, you just create your create your, uh, your geometry and apply the shader to it and then you can just go in and change your emit color and change your density float. And that's pretty much it. Um, so hopefully this tutorial worked well for you. If you've got any questions, just leave a question below and I will get back to you. Um, otherwise, if you've got any requests for tutorials, let me know also in the comments. And if you haven't already, make sure you click the like button. It will help other people find this video. Uh, if you aren't already, make sure you are subscribed as I'm putting out a couple of tutorials a week on my channel for all sorts of things CG related like Render Man for example. Um, and also you can follow Small Robot Studio on Facebook if you want to keep up to date with when tutorials are posted or just want to get in the discussion there, yeah, that's a good place for it. That's it for now though, thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.